Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you here to the Prog Monster, a channel that is dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. My name is Murph, and I am the host of this show. So we're here on day 28 of my 31 favorite rock albums from the year 1982. This will be number four on that list. I just got to take a drink here. And the album we're going with today... Yep, Jethro Tull's Broadsword and the Beast. Fantastic album cover, I think. Um, they kind of took each of the members of the band and kind of added them kind of medievally to the album. So you've got, of course, Ian Anderson in the middle there as the elf warrior. And then each of the corners has a head from one of the other members of the band. This is an excellent instrumental as well as heavy rock and progressive rock album with some fantastic vocals as well. There is um, this this album was on my playlist for like God forty weeks anyways forty weeks maybe what is that eight months no that's ten months sorry so about ten months it was on the on the uh, playlist that I have that I play my albums in every week. Um, but it was fairly new to me up until about a year ago. Yes, I had five or six. Uh, Jethro Tull albums that had lots of history with me going back to I would say probably the beginning of this century and just had lots of listening time and this album came on fairly recently along with albums like Benefit and War Child and um, Storm Watch and um, Heavy Horses, all the albums that have come out that I've purchased in the last couple of years that really have kind of put Jethro Tull into almost a different stratosphere, including the new albums like Rock, uh, Rock Flood, and um, what's the other one? Yeah, drawing a blank on it. Anyways, um, just such a good album and. I think it might, to me, be, it might, it's probably going to end up a top five Jethro Tull album, which is saying a lot, because the Jethro Tull is, like, all their albums are so good, this one no different from that, and just, and it's only been around a year, and it's already made my top four of uh, my favorite albums from that particular year, from 1982. But there was no way to get around it. It's just too strong of an album. I suspect that giving, given three or four more years, and this is almost a certain to pass all the qualifications for Masterpiece for me, uh, it will almost certainly rival and be in the top five for a very long time. Might even might even go as far as number one. That, that'll hard to be hard to believe, but I think it could do it. It's just so so good, you know. Anderson, uh, excellent flute and vocals on this album, among his best, I think, at least for the vocal part. Um, Martin Barr, you know, great guitar playing. David Pegg, you know, absolutely killer on the bass as well. And then you got the two guys that maybe aren't as well known. I'm going to use my glasses here so I can see their names, just so I don't pronounce them wrong, which is something I'm not so good at. Uh, Peter John Vet Vetis, I believe that's how you say it, and then Jerry Con um, Conway as well. So yeah, excellent album. Lots of really good stuff on here. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to take this album because it didn't initially do all that well for me when I first got it. Um, the first time I listened to it was uh, during one of the Battle of the... Um, uh, one of the prog wars uh, this was one of the albums that i used during that and that was my first time listening to it didn't really do it that well in the prog wars because i didn't really like it initially if we were doing that again it would probably would have been right to the finals but anyways um it has taken off got its full legs on there and just fantastic and the funny part about this album too is that it has um like the original 10 tracks, I think it's 10, looks like 10 or 11, yeah, it might be even 12 tracks, oh no, it was 10 tracks initially on the album, 
And when they done this re-release of this masterpiece, or the master's re-release here, they added an additional uh, nine songs to the album. And all of those songs are almost as good as the first uh, bat batch of songs. So yeah, excellent album. Uh, highly recommend it. And it's going to be number four today on my list of 31 favorite rock albums from 1982. So please hit the like and subscribe. That's much appreciated. Don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss any more of this content. And uh, any comments about the Jethro Tull album that went forth today, you can do that in the comment section below. And we will see you tomorrow for another episode of my 31 favorite rock albums from 1982. Take care.